going on everybody and welcome to 2022 our first review we're starting it off with you know another bourbon here as is tradition this is garrison brothers small batch by the way i don't know how you guys feel about the wax not a huge fan this one actually ooh, solid pop fake cork but still a solid pop this one the wax wasn't too bad came off pretty easily didn't get stuck or anything like that but some of them i just have a lot of trouble opening up now i usually like to open these up beforehand let them breathe not do anything with the neck pour but it's 2022, we do what we want. But everybody knows before we get started on all of that, time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Okay, it's different. So here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is Garrison Brothers Small Batch. This comes in at 74% corn, 15% red wheat, which I believe leaves us with 11% Canadian malted barley. So we've got stuff from all over the place. We got Canada barley, we've got uh, Texas corn, and then we got red wheat. I don't know if there's a difference between red wheat, blue wheat, yellow wheat. I don't really know. It does tell you the corn variety here, though, on the side here. Food grade number one white coming from South Texas. So it's interesting that they're getting their corn from Texas. I like that. Keep it homegrown, all that kind of stuff. This is distilled, bottled, everything is done, blended by Garrison Brothers in Texas. This isn't sourced by anybody, but it's also interesting that they're shipping in the Canadian uh, malted barley. So they're not just using stuff from Texas. They're getting stuff from all over. And I don't normally do this. If you don't already know about the channel, by the way, click that subscribe button. We put out reviews weekly and we're adding content all of the time. This is one, I, I normally do price, taste, drinkability, and I start with drinkability, but I'm going to start with taste on this because I think that's the most interesting part of this bottle. The taste on this bottle is what I would describe as craft meets Kentucky, and let me explain what I mean by that. This has that craft distillery taste. If you've drank enough craft distillery bottles, you start to pick up on this youth, this uh, almost like a licorice flavor, right? A lot of the stuff that I get from copper distilled stuff rather than column distilled stuff. I'm reading a book right now. It's telling me all about what different grains will do and different things will do. This tastes like a craft distillery bottle, which I don't know if, I guess Garrison Brothers would be considered craft. Now they're obviously, I got this in Jersey, so they're shipping all over. You can even order it online and get it to your door. But the reason I says the reason I say meets Kentucky is because it doesn't overwhelm with the crafty note the way that a lot of other distilleries seem to just, that's the only note that you're going to get out of that is that youth, that craft, that straw, that grass. And you don't really get to appreciate anything else with this. I was, I was hesitant when I started drinking this bottle and when I was researching this bottle, if I was going to like it. I was hesitant because it's a different mash bill, right? It's not your traditional bourbon. And this is by no means your traditional bourbon. If you're looking for a traditional Kentucky straight bourbon, this isn't what you're going to be looking for. But I will tell you this. It's the first quote unquote craft distillery that I truly enjoyed since Breckenridge. Breckenridge is another, again, they're not really craft distillery anymore. They're definitely, they're definitely expanding and they're making their products more well-known and more versed and getting aged behind it and everything. But this one is just so well balanced and so much more flavorful outside of that craft note that I can't hate this too much at all. So as far as taste goes, it's not your generic bourbon flavor, but it's not supposed to be. They're doing something different. They're doing it with Texas corn. They're doing it with Canadian malted barley. They're using red wheat. If they want it to be your traditional Texas bourbon, they would go out and be like Balconies, which is one that I'm not, I've only had one, maybe two, I think of the Balconies. And I wasn't a fan. This is definitely a better product coming out of Texas as far as I'm concerned. But that's just my personal opinion as all of these videos are. So all that being said, let's get one more sip on this and I'll give you a score on taste. Yeah, see, I really don't hate this at all. I'm going to give it a pretty good score. Let's give it like an 8.5, 8.52 when it comes to taste on this. And while we normally start with drinkability, that's what we're going to get into next on this. It's not a high proof. It's not a high octane. 94 proof. It's nothing crazy, but it's also not down there in the 80s. I think this drinks, if I would have drank this blind, I think I would have, and it's very easy to, you know, hindsight's 2020. I think I would have put this right in that 95 proof range. Maybe a little, maybe I would have said 95 to 100. I don't think it drinks 90 to 95, but I think it's perfectly proof. And I think it, I, I think it drinks right up to that proof. And we're going to get into an interesting point when we do our bourbon bomb of the week to learn a little bit more about this bottle. But I think that given the proof, given the young age behind this, 
it's pretty spot on. So I don't love it, right? It doesn't sip under its proof, but I don't hate it either at 94 proof. I think it drinks exactly as it should. So we'll give it an exactly average score. Let's give it a 7.10 when it comes to uh, drinkability on this. Again, it's nothing crazy. You're not going to drink like the Booker's where you're drinking 125 proof thinking it's 100, but it's also not drinking an 80 proof thinking it's, you know, 90 or 95. So 7.10 is where we're going to put this when it comes to drinkability. And last but not least, the part that I don't like about this, we're going to get in a price on this bottle. Now, if you on their website, you can buy this bottle for $84.99. That's $85. Now, we always talk about why. Why is that price point on this bottle? And I can't really answer that. So one, again, I'm assuming that they're a craft distillery, right? Obviously, they have a little bit of a reach if they can get a Texas bourbon all the way to New Jersey. So they're not brand new to the game. They're not just giving out stuff in their own market. But at the same time, it doesn't appear as if they're they're as big as they want to be yet, which is probably why they're pricing their bottles where they are. They're giving you a premium price, but are they giving you a premium product? Now we've got the you know the all the all the verbiage is here, right? You've got corn variety, and it tells you, and it tells you the bottle number and the age three years and the release date and the big star and the Texas all over this, and it tells you the nice story on the side of this and everything, but. All of that is exactly that. It's a story. It's what's on the bottle. Is that really bringing or adding any value to the experience when drinking this? Now, I will tell you my experience when drinking this was a pleasant one. I enjoyed the bourbon, but there's a lot of good bourbon out there for a lot cheaper than $85, especially which comes, I'm not a proof hound by any means, but we talk about proof and how that does either raise or lower the price depending on the proof. Basil Hayden can put out thousands of bottles at 80 proof, but yet when you, it's Jim Beam, but at the same time when they put out Booker's, they're putting out less because they have to proof it at 125. They can't water it down to expand their product. So 94 proof, they're not exactly expanding or limiting themselves to a certain number of bottles. So with that, they're importing the, the malted barley from Canada. I get the pricing there. But at $85, I just can't seem to wrap my head around why this bottle seems to be $85. And maybe you know something that I don't. The only other thing, which we're going to get into the bourbon bomb of the week, which may give you a little bit more of an explanation of the price on this, is interesting. So we will keep that in mind and we'll tell you about that afterwards. But price, I'm going to give this like a 6.44. But listen, while I add these scores up, let's send it over to this week's bourbon bomb of the week and learn a little bit about Garrison Brothers and why this might be the price that it is. Cheers, y'all. So we're going to keep this short and sweet. As I've mentioned multiple times, this is a Texas bourbon. And one thing that they found when they first started this Garrison Brothers project is all of their barrels were breaking. They were cracking. They were leaking. All of these problems they were having and they were saying, why is this happening? Well, the reason it's happening is because nine months out of the year, it's 100 plus degrees in Texas. They have temperatures upwards of 130 degrees. And at Garrison Brothers, this is no different. They were putting them in warehouses. The warehouses get up to 150, 160 plus degrees degrees and a standard stave cannot hold up to that temperature. So what Garrison Brothers actually did is they actually went out and found a place that will make them custom staves to make their barrels thicker. Now what is this going to do? We talk all the time about the aging process, the, the sitting and warehouses process, the heat, humidity, how that can affect a barrel. Well when you have thicker staves and you have that much heat, they're going to expand and when they expand that's going to allow the whiskey that's in that in that barrel to penetrate deeper into those staves, which is going to allow it to touch more sugars. It's going to allow more bourbon to touch more walls and they might lose some more product, but also the product that they get out of it is going to be even more exaggerated as far as the age goes and everything like that. We talked about taste on this. This opens this up to leather notes. This opens this up to oak. While this is only three years old, it still has that aging process behind it that makes it taste more like a six or a seven year old bourbon. So at the same time, while it may cost a little bit more to do that, it's also offering the barrel a little bit more product and taste and flavor that you might not get otherwise, which is an interesting process that they're going through here at Garrison Brothers. What do you guys think of that? But as for our score on this, this came in at a 7.35. To be honest with you, that's not really a bad spot for this bottle at all. The one thing that's holding this bottle back is the price. And again, they're distilling their own product. They're obviously got to recoup a lot of that loss from, from investing in the property, the corn that they're buying local. All of these things go into the cost. 
I think Garrison Brothers, once they get their feet under them a little bit more, they get a couple more years in their barrels, they're going to be able to drop that cost and or up the quality of the bourbon to match that cost, especially with the market we're in today. I don't see them struggling anytime soon. I love what they're doing. I love the people involved. I've talked to a few of them on Instagram. We've messaged back and forth. We've emailed back and forth. So I don't hate this product at all. I love this product. I just think that price point compared to other things on the market today is just a little bit high. But that's where we're going to leave you for today. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m. I drop an image of the bourbon that I'm going to review. You can go on and try and guess the score that I'm going to give it. If you guess the closest, I'll give you a shout out on the channel, as well as enter you in a monthly drawing for some cool prizes, such as our custom Glen Karens. We're also on Discord. Come chat with us 24-7. And if you want to help support the channel, check out our Patreon at Bourbon of the Week on Patreon. As always, please don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and help the channel alg algorithm out just a little bit more. And please... Stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all.